Welcome to another episode of Tink Chat. Today we have Eugene and I once again. Hi. And um, what's the topic today? Uh, we are going to be talking about 3D printed shoes. Yes. Uh, shoes. Or at least what's happening in the shoe industry. Yes, in the shoe industry. Yeah. Um, mm. We're going to talk a little bit about how, what we've seen. So in, far. Yeah, so far in kind and, of all the research yeah. aspect. And uh, what companies are doing in the big world right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we get there though, uh, we um, got we heard your guys' feedback on the audio issues from the last yes. episode. Uh, in hindsight, we probably yeah. shouldn't have recorded in a warehouse. <laughs> giant warehouse. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we since moved the set. Uh, we added a bit of a backdrop for yeah. um, some you know uh, creative flair. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, hopefully the audio in here is a lot, a lot better. better. Yeah. Right. So hopefully, yeah. Um, if it's still weird, do let, let us know. know. We'll keep adjusting until we mm-hmm. get it right. Yep. Okay. Well, let's jump in. So, uh, 3D printed shoes, what's happening in the shoe industry, uh, you know, before we get to what's happening in the big world, what we want to talk a little bit about is what's happening on the research side, because a lot yeah. of this thing is still in experimental stages, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we've had the luxury to be able to go into places like uh, Emily Carr uh, and to see what some of their uh, faculty members and researchers are doing. Yeah. Um, one in particular... Uh, has shown me uh, something that he was working on with regards to silicone print, uh, printing. Yeah. So he takes a traditional uh, caulking uh, stick that you can find at Home Depot for a window, uh, bathtubs, mm-hmm. um, or just you know filling up um, uh, holes on your well your your home construction. Yeah. And he used it for uh, 3D printing uh, a lattice structure for the for the shoes. Mm. Uh, really exploring more from a structural perspective as yeah. well as a material perspective to see if silicone will hold up in mm-hmm. an environment like that. Um, he's, he's printed with that silicone on fabric. Oh, okay. Um, he's printed with that silicone on, I mean, just on itself. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he actually got enough attention from a local company, which I won't disclose for um, their confidentiality yep. purposes, uh, to see if they can leverage what he has done and and uh, apply it to, apply it to yeah bring it to, to market yeah bring it to market yeah which I think is really cool right because this thing is so new mm-hmm. um, and this thing is happening at both a local scale as well as it is kind of on like a global scale with larger companies yeah. as well yeah but um, you know the the researcher um, you know he shared with me some of the, pr- the processes and approaches he took with mm-hmm. uh, approaching this um, experiment yeah. um, he really wanted to explore materials that was one. He really wanted to understand how the materials would work, and then he wanted to apply it in a way that would make sense. So he, you know, hard coded a lot of the, uh, the, actual, the, print. the actual printing because none of the three D printing technology softwares right now could could generate a, uh, a silicone based yeah. mesh or whatever he's designing. Yeah, um, and so so he had to manually do it. So that's kind of usually what happens during the the, hmm. the forefront push. Yeah, uh, and then. And he uh, really looked at when they were kind of exploring the possibility with the local company uh, to see how they could actually bring this technology, so scaling up the technology yeah. uh, to a point where a uh, consumer market could actually adapt, uh, mm-hmm. adopt it. Right, so. so I guess maybe in the next couple of years we'll be looking at shoes that have a silicone bottom? Perha- perhaps, uh, or perhaps customized, uh, yeah, customized in one way or another uh, mm-hmm. for insoles, the bottom, the tops, whichever. Uh, we don't really know 100% where it's going to go yet. Mm, yeah. Interesting. But uh, what I found interesting when he was exploring this kind of process of thinking was how similar it is to what's happening in the BC curriculum. Um, BC, BDSD? Yeah, BD, uh, <laughs> BC curriculum <laughs> added uh, a new curriculum, I think it was a couple years ago, yeah. uh, that introduced uh, a, a concept of applied design, skills, and technology learning. Yeah. So kind of folding all three of those together, and they the, the kind of overarching theme is how design thinking can be applied to a broader skills, uh, a, a broader set of skills, mm-hmm. um, and also knowledge base, so that um, you know we can start to really see some of these amazing things come about. Right, mm-hmm. and yeah, students inside the classrooms are exploring materials, understanding materials, yeah. uh, understanding context, understanding users, having a little bit of empathy when they go into about designing yes. a product or a, a thing or a solution. Yeah, um, all of which are what's happening in the big world. Uh, mm-hmm. What's happening at that post-secondary level for sure on research, yeah. and then most definitely happening uh, in the 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 uber big worlds of you know the large corporations, the Nikes, the mm-hmm. the Adidas, the Facebooks, the you know the best the biggest company in the world is is based off design Apple, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. it's um, all just the same process that um, 
they're taking right now, like K to twelve, the whole designing, prototyping, reiteration, yep. um, until you get the perfect product. Um, <laughs> the question is, is it ever perfect? Well, right? so <laughs> so you keep iterating, and yeah. I mean, and that's and that's perhaps a good thing because we learn new things about. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, both how the product is used, how the users use up and end yeah. up using uh, using it, and then we find new ways to to make things. Yeah. Right. So, um, and I'm pretty sure in, somewhere in the future we'll find something that's newer about uh, ma manufacturing or fabrication that changes mm -hmm. fundamentally what we know. Well, even even 3D printing right now, just just looking into this, it's already changing fundamentally how manufacturing is going to be. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Just in time, customized manufacturing. Yeah, yeah bring it. I, I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's happening in the big world? Um, before we move on to the bigger companies, there's a local company in Vancouver that are um, actually looking into three printed insoles. Um, they're called Weave. And oh yeah. Yeah. I've what heard they about do them. is they take I think three or four pictures of your feet, or you, it's an app, and you take it yourself, and then you send it to them, and after that they'll take those. Uh, four pictures that you take of your feet and just um, three model that curvature that fits your um, the bottom of your the foot. bottom of your, yeah uh, of your foot perfectly, and then afterwards they'll stick it on to the plastic or or the fabric, and then afterwards you got a pair of insoles that fit perfectly for your feet. They print the curvature of your bottom of the foot, yeah. and then yeah. they stick that onto yes. yes the material. So that that part is uh, 3D printed. Cool. Mm -hmm. How and much is it? And it's actually only a hundred dollars for a pair of it, so you're looking at fifty dollars per pa uh, per one. Oh, that's actually so not too bad for customization. I think that's actually pretty affordable. Yeah, I mean, if we're all going for ultimate comfort, yeah, that's what you get. Yeah, yeah, huh? Okay. And so th that's a local company that's looking into using this technology, uh, this new technology for for um, shoes. Um, moving on to um, bigger companies like uh, Adidas and Nike, um, Adidas started their own, I guess, research division called uh, Futurecraft, and that's where they are using 3D printing technology to actually 3D print the insoles and I guess the bottom of the, it's not really the insole, but the bottom of the cushion, the cushiony, the cushiony, cushiony part, part of, the of the shoe. Not, not yeah. the top, not yeah. the fabric top, but the, the bottom where... Um, I guess your feet sits. Well, where it absorbs uh, the shock <laughs> the, impact the shock, when yes, you're jumping, when you're running. Yeah. Um, I, think this, I think this division was created to explore that and also see how they can take this technology to the consumer market. Yes. Leading, so, so exploring how to scale a technology like 3D printing mm -hmm. for making the, kind of the, the, the bottom of the shoes, uh, exploring uh, new ways to make lateral structures for yeah. shock absorbing. Yeah. Um, but then, then at the same time, seeing if they can actually successfully take it and do 10,000, 300,000, yeah. uh, half a million pairs mm -hmm. of shoes. But so far, they're, they're still only focusing mostly on athletes. So um, for professional uh, professional players, which uh, it's, it's a lot easier to customize to their feet for now. Right. Um, and I guess it also gives them time to figure out the kinks, the, the issues that are having with the te technology before they actually uh, bring it to the mass. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really smart though, um, because that demographic will stress the product. Yeah. Uh, that demographic is high performance, so mm -hmm. you know the shoes that can withstand those environments probably will will be perfectly fine, if yeah. not have a lot of room for buffer. Yeah. Uh, in in the consumer market, but it also gives them a user base to do all the testing before they get to mass market, which is, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about iteration? That's yeah. the perfect demographic to do so. Yeah. Um, Nike, on the other hand. Uh, they kind of strayed away from the bottle of the shoe or insoles. They're actually focusing on top of their shoe, so the, the, the fabric that holds your um, foot in. Foot in, in, in. Okay. So um, their division, is, I think, is called fly, fly print. So essentially, they're printing these mesh-like structures um, on the 3D printer, and I'm guessing they're layering it, layer it on top of the shoe, so it kind of covers your feet layer by layer. Oh, oh! So like it sounds kind of weird. But, they're replacing uh, fabric with, with a lattice structure on yes. top that is super thin and breathable and yes. stretchable. Yes. 
they wouldn't tell us what uh, type of material it is, but they just call it 3D printed textile. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think that's better than you know potentially some of the things that we've seen in the other side of kind of the the the, the apparel world where things look more like chainmail. So yeah. I, I I'm I'm open to all shapes and forms of how you can 3D print. Materials. Well, I mean, there there's still holes and holes in the in the design, so technically it still kind of looks like chainmail. If you but, look directly into but it. But probably a lot more comfortable and stretchy. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I think that, you know, I think I think both of these kind of divisions are really cool. They they offer a kind of that iterative process, exploration mm -hmm. process, material exploration is yeah, definitely, definitely one. Yeah. Um, and then really setting a goal to where they want to get to. And if the goal is consumer market, I think they have a lot of challenges in front. Yeah. But uh, that process of design thinking, I think we'll get them there. Um, and we'll get students there and we'll get everyone pretty excited about what the future is for customized shoes. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that wraps up our episode today. Yeah. Um, if you have any comments, or suggestions, topics that you guys want us to cover, leave them in the comments below. And also, don't, so don't forget to subscribe, hit that yeah. notification button. Yeah. And if you're uh, listening on a podcast, which is on Spotify or Anchor, um, feel free to also subscribe there as well. Awesome. Okay. Thank we'll you. see you guys next time. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. -bye.